dear students welcome to the class welcome to the series on indian polity for group 1 tspsc prelims as a part of indian polity series we have seen the parliament and parliament related topics in the last class today to continue with the series of this course let me today introduce to you all a very important topic for our exam that is the governor and the state legislature the governor and the state legislature now let us see some basics about the governor and state legislature article 153 says there shall be a governor for each state and this governor is the nominal executive this governor is the nominal executive of the state of the state okay now state legislature article 168 of the constitution defines a state legislature according to article 168 state legislature is defined as three things state legislative council the governor and the state legislative assembly state legislature is not compulsorily a bicameral legislature like parliament see parliament is always bicameral meaning two houses state legislature can be bicameral or can be unicameral now as on today there are six states in india where there is a bicameral legislature they are andhra pradesh telangana karnataka maharashtra up and bihar article 169 of the constitution deals with the creation or abolition of the state legislative council article 170 of the constitution talks about the composition of the assembly article 171 talks about the composition of the council and you all know article 153 says there shall be a governor for each state very very important 95% of the state legislature process is similar to parliament let us start the state legislature and understanding the state legislature and governor with the help of objective type questions look at the question number 1 right question number 1 look at this consider the following and choose the correct statement Article one fifty three says there shall be a governor for each state. Just before I told, this is correct statement. The seventh Constitutional Amendment Act amended Article one fifty three. Very important. This is also correct statement. Answer is C. But let me explain this. Article one fifty three says there shall be a governor for each state. Yes. now this seventh constitutional amendment act in 1956 said there shall be a governor appointed for more than two or more states also the same governor can be a governor for two or more states also this provision was not there in the original constitution the seventh constitutional amendment act has introduced this provision of saying that 
the same governor f can be appointed for two or more states like you know in 2014 we had a same governor as the governor for both the state of Andhra Pradesh and the state of Telangana. So this is your first question answer is both the statements are correct. Let us go to the next question. Right. Consider the following and choose the correct statement. Article 155 says the governor is appointed and removed any time by the president. Okay. The governor is the nominal executive of the state. Again, both the statements are correct. C is the answer. Now look at the screen. Article 153 says there shall be a governor. Article 154 says governor is the executive ed executive head of the state 155 says the governor is appointed or removed any time by the president of india if he is not removed any time the governor will continue for 5 years as is term so this is article 154 governor is a nominal executive and you know, governor is appointed or removed any time by the president of India. Both the statements are correct. Now, look at the screen again. Focus on it. The president of India can any time remove the governor. But even if, if the president do not remove the governor, he continues to stay till five years. There are two types of executives. Nominal executive and a real executive. The nominal executive of the center is the president. The real executive of the center is the prime minister and council of ministers. Now coming back to this state, the nominal executive of the state is the governor and the real executive of the state is CM and council of ministers, CM and other ministers. CM and other ministers. Let us go to the next question. Which article of the constitution deals with advocate general of the state? See, the state is discussed in part 6 of the constitution from right article 152 to 237. As part of this article 152 to 237, it consists of the governor, the council of ministers and CM, the state legislative assembly, the state legislative council, right, the advocate general, the advocate general, the I court and the subordinate court. So, these are somewhere discussed in part 6 of the constitution. Now, I am talking about advocate general, right. Article 76 deals with attorney general of India, attorney general. Article 165 talks about advocate, okay. Now, 163 is linked to council of ministers. It is linked to council of ministers. Now, what is 208? Very important for the exam, right. Article 208 talks about rules of procedure and conduct of business. The rules of the procedure of the assembly is framed by state legislative assembly only, like your parliament. See article 118 talks about the rules of the procedure and conduct of the business for the parliament. According to article 208 of the constitution, Assembly frames its own rules. Now, what about the council? The rules of the state legislative council is framed by governor with the help of the assembly. Remember this for your exam. Remember this for your exam. 
The rules of the procedure and conduct of the business is discussed in Article 118 and also Article 208. Article 118 provides power to the authority to the parliament to frame its own rules. Article 208 provides the authority to the state legislative assembly to frame its own rules. And coming to council, governor with the help of the assembly will frame the rules of the council. Let us go to the next. Consider the following and choose the correct statement. Consider the following and choose the correct statement. Okay? Now, look at the screen. Very, very important. There is no provision of joint sitting in the state legislature. Correct? See, in case of a deadlock, in case of a deadlock, as per Article 108, there is a joint sitting of the parliament for parliament bills. But in case of a deadlock in state legislature, there is no provision of joint sitting. Constitutional Amendment Act bills cannot be initiated in the state legislature. This is also correct. Answer is C. A constitutional amendment bills can be only initiated from parliament. It can be only initiated from parliament, either Lok Sabha or Rajya Sabha. Anything is fine. It can be initiated only from parliament. Okay. Now, next question. Consider the following and choose the correct statement. Consider the following and choose the correct statement. Okay. Now, correct statement. In case of the president rule, president has the authority to promulgate ordinance on the stately subjects for a state. Okay. The council of ministers of the state are appointed by the governor. Now, look at the screen. Understand this very carefully. The President rule is discussed in Article 3, 5, 6 of the Constitution. Article 3, 5, 6 provides power to the President to promulgate the President rule in case of the constitutional mechanism failure in the state. Now, whenever the President rule is promulgated in the state, the parliament gets the entire rights or authority to make laws on the subjects which are part of the state list. Not only that, in the normal time, the governor has the authority to promulgate ordinance on the state list subjects under Article 213 of the Constitution. Article 213 authorizes the governor to promulgate an ordinance. But in case of the emergency, the state emergency, the president has the right also to promulgate an ordinance of the subjects which are part of the state list. Very, very important. In case of the state emergency or president rule, the president has the authority to promulgate an ordinance on the state list subjects. This is your first statement. Look at the first state, second statement. The council of ministers of the state are appointed by the governor. Look at this. The council of ministers of the state are appointed removed or reshuffled or reshuffled by the governor but not on his will he has to follow the advice of the cm and is this advice given by cm is binding right the cm 
suggest the name and the governor has to appoint that person as the minister. And here the communication given by CM is binding. Okay. So answer is C. Both the statements are correct. Next question. What is the what are the rights of the governor? The rights of the governor. The governor has the right to. The governor has the right to. One. Summon the state legislature. Prorogue the state legislature. Dissolve the state legislative assembly. Excellent. Now, what is the meaning of summoning? Summoning means to start. Prorogation to stop. Now, here dissolution dissolve for temporary period. Here, in parliament or state legislature, we generally have three sessions in an year. We generally have three sessions in one year. The first one is budget session. The second one is monsoon session. And the third one is winter session. Now we have monsoon session, budget session and winter session. See generally budget session is in February, March, monsoon session. July, August and winter session, November, December. Now here the question is, who start the session of the state legislature? Who stop the session of the state legislature? The answer is governor. Governor has the authority to start or stop the session of the state legislature, like president. President has the authority to summon the parliament or prorogue the parliament. Now look at the third statement. Governor under the recommendations of the CM and Council of Ministers can dissolve the state legislative assembly before the completion of the term. What is the term of the assembly? Five years. Before the completion of the term, as per the recommendations given by the CM, the governor can dissolve the assembly anytime. So this is also correct. Answer is C. You know, the gap between two sessions, you know, the gap between two sessions, this one, there is a gap. The gap between two sessions, it cannot be more than, it cannot be more than six months. When the gap between two sessions of the assembly is more than six months, the assembly is considered automatically dissolved. Remember this. The gap between two sessions cannot be more than six months. If the gap between two sessions is more than six months, the assembly is automatically considered dissolved. The assembly is automatically considered dissolved. And this gap between two sessions is called, this gap between two sessions is called recess. It's called resist. Resist means to rest. Let's go to the next question. Yes, look at the question. For which of the following bills, for which of the following bills, governor prior recommendations is needed to be initiated in state legislature. Okay, see, to be initiated in state legislature. Key, key here. This word is very important here. Look at the screen. One money bill, two financial bill type one, the constitutional amendment bills. Okay, so we have different types of the bills. What are they? Ordinary bill, financial bill type one, financial bill type two, money bill, cap, constitutional amendment bills. Now this is with respect to state legislature. Okay, state legislature. Okay, now, prior president of India permission, okay, where it is initiated, is it in Lok Sabha, uh, assembly or council? Ordinary bill does not need prior president of India permission, it does not need and it can be initiated in assembly or council, anywhere it is fine. 
financial bill type 1 need president of india permission prior permission and it is initiated only from assembly financial bill type 2 doesn't need prior president of india permission and it can be initiated either from assembly or council money bill need president of india prior permission and it is also initiated only from assembly cab is not initiated is not initiated in the state legislature only okay so one thing which we need to understand here is this is not president this is governor because we are discussing about the state legislature here so governor prior recommendation is not needed is not needed for the ordinary bill he is needed for financial bill type 1 he is not needed for type 2 governor prior recommendations is needed for money bill cab is not initiated in state legislature only okay now look at the options for which of the following bills governor prior recommendations is needed to be initiated in state is needed money bill yes needed financial bill type 2 type 1 yes needed constitution amendment bills not initiated in state legislature only so the answer is one two. b is the answer okay so whenever you are actually uh, preparing notes short notes or revising the subject try to prepare in pointers or use flow charts use tables so that it will be very easy for you to revise and remember in the future now let's go to the next consider the following and choose the correct statement okay consider the following and choose the correct statement the term of the cm is 5 years the term of the cm is 5 years the term of the speaker is 5 years e means of state legislative assembly the term of the advocate general is 5 years oh my god one only one two only one two three none what is the answer try to guess the term of the cm is five years the term of the speaker is five years the term of the advocate general is five years answer is none three statements are wrong listen to me very carefully the term of the CM is not fixed by the Constitution of India. The governor can remove the CM any time. If the CM is not able to prove his majority in the state legislative assembly, meaning the CM can continue to be the CM till he prove the majority in the assembly if he is not able to prove his majority in the assembly the president can remove i mean the governor can remove the cm any time so the term of the cm is not fixed and the cm can be removed any time by the governor if he is not proving his majority in assembly I hope you got the clarity. Now look at the second statement. The term of the speaker is five years. Now, the term of the speaker is till a day before the first meeting of newly formed assembly. I am repeating this. The term of the speaker is till a day before the first meeting of newly formed state legislative assembly one day before the first meeting of the assembly is the term of the speaker so this is also wrong now look at the third statement the term of the advocate general is five years absolutely wrong according to article 165 of the constitution according to article 
165 of the constitution, the term of the advocate general is not fixed. The advocate general continues to stay in the office till the pleasure of the governor, till the will of the governor, meaning governor can remove the advocate general any time, but as a tradition, as a convention, the advocate general resigns when the government falls or till the government term is completed, the advocate general continues to be. This is as per the tradition or convention. So, the answer is none. Very, very important. These types of questions will be appeared in the exam. Let us go to the next question. Consider the following and choose the correct statement. The state council of ministers are collectively responsible to state legislative assembly. The strength of the council of ministers cannot be more than 15 percent of the total strength of assembly, but a minimum 12. You know what? Both the statements are correct. Now, let me explain. The state council of ministers are individually responsible to governor because governor can remove the council of ministers anytime and the state council of ministers are collectively responsible to state legislative assembly important for the exam individually responsible to governor and collectively responsible to state legislative assembly look at the second statement See, the strength of the Council of Ministers is nowhere mentioned in the original constitution. This was added. The strength of the Council of Ministers is added by 91st Constitutional Amendment Act 2000. Strength of the Council of Ministers is added by 91st Constitutional Amendment Act 2003. According to 91st Constitutional Amendment Act 2003, the strength of the Union Council of Ministers cannot be more than 15 percent of the total strength of Lok Sabha union. The strength of the state council of ministers cannot be more than 15 percent of the total strength of the assembly, but minimum 12. There is no minimum number mentioned in the union, but minimum number is mentioned in the state. So, the answer is both the statements are correct. Now, let us go to the next one. Right. Let us see the last question. Consider the following and choose the correct statement. Okay. The maximum strength of the council cannot be more than one third of the assembly. The minimum strength of the assembly cannot be less than 60. Okay. This is a very tricky question. Look at this. Now, let us see first assembly. The maximum strength of the assembly cannot be more than 500, cannot be more than 500, it can be less than 500. IST is UP, 403 MLS. The minimum strength of the assembly cannot be less than 60, but there are few exemptions. Now, exemptions are given to Manipur, Goa, right, Mizoram, right, Sikkim, etc. Because of the less population, we have very less MLS in the state legislative assembly, less than 60. But the minimum strength as per article 170 is, the minimum strength as per article 170 is 60, okay, the minimum, the minimum strength of the assembly cannot be less than 60, this is correct, as per article 170. Now, what is the strength of the council. Amma, this is important expected. The maximum strength of the council cannot be more than one third of the state legislative assembly. The maximum strength of the council cannot be more than one third of the state legislative assembly. But the minimum strength of the council cannot be less than 40. This is discussed in article 170. 
So the maximum strength of the council cannot be more than one third of the assembly. This is correct. Answer is C. Now very, very important. Try to understand this. The composition of the assembly and the composition of the council is what you need to revise. And let me repeat this. The maximum strength of the council cannot be more than one third of the assembly. And these members of the council are called state legislative council or MLCs, member of legislative councils. These MLCs are elected by five batch constituencies. One third of the members are elected by MLAs. One third of the members are elected by local bodies. One twelfth of the members are elected by government teachers. One twelfth of the members are elected by graduates. And one sixth, the remaining are nominated by the governor. Entire process of the composition and how they are elected is discussed in article 171 of the constitution. Very, very important. Governor and state legislature, try to understand this and please revise the class again. So, this is the governor and state legislature. I will see you guys again in the next class with another topics. Till then, keep learning, happy learning, Jai Hind. Oh, oh, oh.